Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today we're going to uh, continue our work with similarity. Uh, we're going to focus specifically on similar triangles today, um, and you're going to see some familiar language. Uh, we're going to look at three different ways to prove that two triangles are similar. We know by definition that two triangles are similar if all the sides are proportional and all the angles are congruent. Um, but it turns out uh, similar to, similar, haha, <laughs> funny guy, didn't even do that on purpose. Turns out that similar to congruent triangles, where you didn't need to prove all the parts were congruent, you, we had some shortcuts. We also have some shortcuts for proving things are similar, and there are three of them. The first one is the angle-angle similarity postulate, uh, and that basically, as you see here, says that, uh, let me find my highlighter, says that if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. That's pretty straightforward. Angle-angle. Uh, if you have two angles congruent, so for example in the, in the one that you see here, if that angle and that angle are congruent, that angle and that angle are congruent, of course we know from our previous work that if those two angles are congruent, then the third angle also has to be congruent. But that's already sort of goes without saying, so we don't say it. So angle-angle similarity. So if you have two angles in one triangle congruent to two angles in another, the triangles are similar. Um, and again, this is only for triangles. That's not true about other figures. We'll get to that later. Another shortcut, uh, and you'll recognize this looks like uh, we, what we did with congruence, side-angle-side. Um, but it's not exactly the same. This is side angle side similarity. And the way you write that, it's a little hard to see typed there, but the way you write that is side angle side and then the similar symbol. Um, and you can say you can also write out side angle side similarity for that. Uh, and this basically says that if you have two sides and the angle between them, if the two sides are proportional, the sides that form the angles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So not that they're congruent, but they're, they're proportional. So you see here, uh, RT corresponds with LP. So I'm just going to make up some numbers just to see, show you what I mean. So let's say this was 3 and this was 6. So our scale factor is 1 to 2. And let's say that TS and PM are in the same ratio. So let's say TS was uh, 2 and PM was 4. Well, these two and these two are in the same ratio, that's what this part means, and the angle between them is congruent, so angle T congruent to angle P. So if you have the sides are proportional in the same proportional, so this to this is the same as this to this, and the angle between them is congruent, then the triangles must be similar. That's side angle side. Okay, next is side side side. Um, and that says if you don't know anything about the angles, but you have the, if, if all the sides are proportional, so if they're all in the same ratio, uh, then the triangles must be similar. So again, just sort of making up fake numbers, let's just say this is 2 and this is 4, being really simple numbers here, so this is twice as big. If they're all twice as big, so if this is uh, 7, and this is 14, and if this is 8, and this is 16. So if they're all in that same ratio, 1 to 2, 1 to 2, 1 to 2, the triangles are similar. Okay, let's look at how we can apply that. So first we see a situation where we are given that those two triangles are similar. So A, B, C, similar to D, E, F. Uh, we want to see which of these statements is true. Um, so first of all, and this goes to when we talked about this with congruence. Uh, the order that you name the triangle similarity is important. So in this example, A corresponds with D, B with E, C with F. So you can name them differently, but as long as those parts correspond. So let's see if that holds up. So B corresponds with E. Yep, that's true in the original one. A corresponds with F. A Uh-oh, A didn't correspond with F. So that's not true. That's going to be false. Um, and what you could do is mark the congruent angles. You know that A and D go together. So A and D are congruent. And B and E go together. So those angles are congruent. 
in the third angles are congruent. Sometimes the can, it can be helpful to see which parts correspond with which. And here I can see B and E, yeah, they go together, but A and F, A and F, nope, those are not necessarily the same. That's why that's false. Okay, if angle D is 45, then angle A is 45, well, do they correspond? Yeah, we can see that in the similarity statement, so I don't even need to look at the figure, that's true. Angle B is 70, so angle F is 70. Do they correspond? No, B and E correspond, but B does not correspond with F. And you can see that in the figure, so that's going to be false. And then the ratio of a side, so AB, so this side, to this side, do those correspond? Yes, they do. First two letters AB with the first two letters DE, should be in the same ratio as two other corresponding sides. So let's see, do EF and BC correspond? Well, they do, but in the wrong order. And sometimes that colon notation can be tricky. So if you wrote it as a fraction, if this makes more sense to you, AB is to DE as EF is to BC. The problem is we went in a different order. Uh, so this is going to be false because we went in a different order, right? If you go first triangle to second triangle, then this one would also need to be first to second. But since it reversed the order, that doesn't work. So that's no good. So that's why that's false. Okay, a lot to think about. We've got one more problem I want to show you. So here's a figure, uh, and, and this is a pretty common figure that we see when we're studying similarity. Uh, we've got a triangle inside another triangle. Let me see how we're doing on time. Oh, we're doing great. A triangle inside another triangle. And notice that these, these two are parallel. Okay, these two are parallel. So effectively what you have is two similar triangles. And I'm going to show those to you so you can see them. There's this smaller triangle. Oops, and we can do it that way too. But then there's also this bigger triangle. And I'll move that out of the way. And what we see is that um, those two triangles are similar. Uh, and because these two lines are parallel, I see that this angle and this angle are corresponding angles, going way back to the beginning, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So those are corresponding angles which are congruent. Similarly, over on this side, I've got this angle and this angle congruent. And then I also have, and this is the part that sometimes gets interesting, angle J is in both triangles. And you can see that here, that this angle and this angle are actually the same angle. It's, it's the reflexive property, only with angles. We're used to seeing it with sides, but now we're seeing it with angles. So that angle is congruent to itself. Of course, we only needed two angles to prove that they were similar. That's the angle-angle similarity postulate. Okay, so... The first question, A, is asking, I, K, J is similar to what? And again, we want to match up corresponding parts. So I, K, J is the small triangle. So what is this angle? What does I correspond with? That corresponds with H. K is next. K is next. So what does that correspond with? That corresponds with L. And J corresponds with itself. So that would be our answer to, to, to part A. Part B, blank is to x, so something is to x, as 9 is to 24. And you're thinking, well, I don't see 24 anywhere. But if you think about the small triangle and the big triangle, and what I will sometimes do, and this might help you, you might want to do this, is if you look at the big triangle here and label the dimensions. So this bottom here is that HL, that's x. But this side here is JL. If you can see, that's JL. And that's 9 plus 15. That's 24. JK, haha, <laughs> JK. Can't let that go. All right, it's getting late. I know it's not that funny. Sorry. So that's 9. Um, so let's go back to the problem now and see if it makes a little more sense. So the two numbers I have, 9 and 24, so that's this side with this side. So then what corresponds with x? 
Well, 9 goes with 24, so that's this side with this side. So in the big original figure, that's JK goes with JL. So what goes with X? Well, this side corresponds with this side. So IK corresponds with HL. So you see this can start to get a little bit tricky. But IK is 12, so my question mark there is actually 12. So 12 goes with X, so small base to big base, small side 9 to big base 24. Okay, and once you've got that, we can cross multiply and solve. Um, if you want, you can simplify this fraction first. So 9 and 24 have a common factor of 3, so maybe I'll just make this a little easier on myself and divide the top and bottom by 3. So now when I cross multiply, I get 3x equals 12 times 8, which is 96. Divide, and I get that x is 32. Whew, a lot of work there. Okay, now let's look at c. So c says 9 is to 24. We've seen that. That's 9 is to 24. As 6 is to what? Well, 6 is this side is to this, which is actually the 6 plus the y. So this is actually 6 plus y. Um, so your question mark here in writing that proportion, again, 9 is to 24. So small side on the right to big side on the right, 9 is to 24, as 6 is to 6 plus y. And so this is actually 6 plus y. And once you've got that, you can again cross multiply and solve. Uh, it's a little bit more involved, but this is something you're, you're going to see. So cross multiplying. Uh, again, before I cross multiply, maybe I'm going to simplify that fraction to 3 eighths like I did before. And now remember, when you cross multiply, you need to distribute. It's three times that whole 6 plus y. So that's actually 18 plus 3y equals the 8 times 6, which is 48. And now it's a fairly simple equation to solve. Subtract the 18 and then divide. And we get our answer, y equals 10. That's it for now. Thanks.